Hey, how's everybody doing out there? Phil Montelioni, the book peddler, coming to you from my shop in Smithville Flats, New York. If you haven't, I hope you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Book Peddler. I run a small independent bookshop here in the sticks of upstate New York. And I, I go on book picks. I do show in-store, out-store activity, um, do book reviews, and uh, different educational things like uh, this based on my selling experiences and, and, and buying and things of that nature. So go ahead, if you haven't yet, you know, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Be notified when a new video comes out. And, uh, okay, with all that being said, um, I was up late Sunday evening. It was a very late uh, playing music with my buddy Mike Molnex. You can check out his uh, video called Jolene on the channel. We're up to like 3 in the morning playing. I'm burnt out, but I'm, I'm doing a lot better. I'm recuperating. I got my coffee, you know, so so we're getting there. But um, let's get to this video, all right? Um, I said in the last one I had 500 bucks. I was going to go be a big spender. And uh, basically, I, I love to hunt for books at antique malls in, in small independent antique shops. I think that it's kind of like a, a hidden, not too many people might might know that there can be great treasures to be found when, when, it, when you're sourcing, trying to source books at uh, antique uh, spots. So I'm going to show you the material that I purchased uh, this last weekend. I'm going to let you know what I bought it for, what I'm going to sell it for. And um, beforehand, I'm going to explain a little bit ab ab about sourcing books from antique spots. I've had really good uh, success in the past doing this. It's not something I, I, I do on a daily basis or a weekend basis. It might be once every month or two, but probably even less than that at times. But um, I, you see, when I first started this shop, I actually wanted to do like half antiques, half books. I thought they flowed well together. Um, and, and to make a long story short, books are more profitable for me. And I'm better at it, but I still love antiques. So I would go in antique shops and I would see that in different booths, you know, uh, these dealers, they generally would have some books because if they're picking places, a lot of times there's, there's a chance that they're going to find old books as well. And so some of them, they decorate well, they look, they, they present well and they'll, they'll, they'll put them up for sale. You can find good local books there, things of that nature. So I'll tell you a quick little story though. Um, I've sourced some great material. I, I bought a Bible, a pocket Bible, 1774, out of a out of a, a antique shop, and um, I was able to flip that for 500 bucks. Uh, I bought it for 125. I don't know if I said that before. I'm a little burnt, but uh, and and then there's there's been other great buys I've come across. Now, now you know, you want to be careful. I was in Cooperstown uh, two weekends ago. This is a where the Baseball Hall of Fame is. And it's kind of like a tourist trap. I hit up three antique spots. But everything was priced so high, um, like retail and above. Um, I've shown in video, I sell these Peterson magazines, right? Uh, leather bound, held together magazines from like 1880s, 1860s, whatever that range. I sell them solid for like $50 a piece. Um, they take a little bit of time to sell. Well, I go in this spot. And they're selling theirs for $75, $80, $90, and the books are tattered. And it's like, hey, yo, more power to you if you get that for them. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That doesn't seem to be what the market's dictating. But in these areas, perhaps they can they they can um, ask for, for more, uh, apparently. And maybe they're getting it, maybe they're not. I, I don't know. So my advice is, if you're going to go out in the hunt, stay away from those areas. Go to your outlying areas, your small towns, um, uh, things a little off the beaten path. Um, because generally speaking, they, they're not seen as heavy as traffic as something in the touristy areas. They might be a little bit more motivated to sell. And of course, you can always ask the owner, can you do me any better? You know, what, what can we do here? And usually they're, they're able to do you a little bit better. Um, the thing about sourcing books from these antique places, uh, 
as as well is you're going to be dealing with older material like i'm about to show you a three volume set here that i bought you're dealing with older material and so there's certain things to keep it that i keep in mind anyways when i'm buying something like this if i'm not completely sure these things don't have barcodes you can't look them up most of these places don't have internet service to even do so if you wanted to. So you got to kind of go with your gut a little bit. Exper and experiencing handling this stuff nonstop um, has given me um, such a confidence when I when I buy things like this. I'm not as scared to buy them. Now, this this had didn't cost too much, so we're not in too deep of water. But um, anyhow, uh, what I like about antique malls as well is that like based on the booth if you're looking for um if there's a booth that has hunting and fishing stuff you're usually going to be able to find some titles like that too and um it's great for for a very reasonable price generally um more reasonable than you're going to find online or to be quite honest maybe even in a shop like mine where um you know i'm very fair in my pricing uh, i don't need to back that but um the the thing is, they're, they're a little motivate, more motivated to sell, I believe. What's also worked out well is my connections that I make with these dealers when they're on picks. Uh, you know, a lot of them, they're coming across books and most of them don't care about the books. They just need somebody to get rid of them to. Well, guess what? I'm your guy. They're going to call me up and um, we're going we're gonna to work that out. So, um Anyhow, again, I think that antique malls and antique places are kind of like little hidden gems if you're looking to source material or get a better deal. And so I'm going to show you these books. I figured out how to flip the camera so so uh, I can flip it and show you the material here. And, and let's get started. I hope I didn't leave anything out. If you have any questions about source material in these malls, uh, feel free, you know, to ask. Let's flip it. All right, I'm going to show you what I got here. And we're going to start with this three-volume set. This is a three-volume set on uh, Christopher Columbus. I'll put it this way. They're uh, beautiful leather bound. They're, there's issues here, obviously. They're missing the, the, the plates that had the titles on it. This is by Washington Irving. They display well, though. Look at the nice marble boards. Now, what volume is this? This is one. Let me take you inside. I paid $30 uh, for this set. And thought that was more than fair. Uh, Ten bucks a book. Come on now. And I'm going to tell you my little thing. Let me show you Columbus. But here, look at that engraving. Ain't that gorgeous? So, okay. There's there's the man himself. Very cool. And um, let's show you the title page. This is a Hudson edition. The Life and Voyages of Christopher Col Columbus. The author's revised edition. And let me see. The year, 1868. When I look at books like this, I go with my gut on them, okay? At 10 bucks a book, I said in my head, I get $75 for this set. That's that's what I thought in my gut. I will always ask myself, whoops, I'll be real quick. I always kind of ask myself, um, you know, can I make that back? I know I can make that back. You know, come on, I'm the book man, right? But um, no, but honestly, it, it, it's it, it's like if I got in the dire straits, it's sitting forever. Can, can I recoup that money and, and move on to the next if need be? And absolutely, I, I, I believe I can or I, I wouldn't bought it. But I do believe that holds a value of about $75. I haven't researched it yet. But so, you know, minor investment, 30 bucks, not too bad. Let's flip it. I went to another center and I got came across this beauty america on the ropes a pictorial history of johnson and jeffrey's fight it's a very large heavy coffee table book okay and um it was also inscribed by the author you know what i did with this book i saw that the sale price was 70 dollars, and you know they had 40 on it now all right here we go here's the inscription now you look at that and I, I just figured to myself that that's worth more. Boxing's a popular subject. Look at these big, beautiful photographs of these guys fighting. It's just, it was just awesome. And so I asked them if that they could do any better. And they did $30 on this book for me. And I said, yeah, I'm going to take a shot at it for 30 bucks. Well, this book in acceptable condition is up listed for $77. And like new, people have it listed for 300 which I believe is kind of 
a, a lot. And I listed this at 145 because it does have a little bit of edge wear to um to the dust jacket and on the back of it. And so, you know, you take in factors of consideration, and I think 145 is a fair price. And, um, you know, I'm telling you right now my prices and everything. I can do anybody better if they see this online. But I, I've had people... I've had people like sometimes saying, you know, uh, would you pay, would you pay for it two dollars? It doesn't matter what I paid for it. Someone could give it to me. What am I gonna do? Give it away to you? You know, people have to have a funny way of thinking about things. It's what the market dictates. All right. But um, besides the point, if you guys do see something you like, I can always do you better on my prices. Back to the show. Okay, fifty years of Schwinn built bicycles. I thought nice commemorative book, right? I'll show you Mr. Schwinn. There he is. And, um, you know, it was for eight bucks. And I thought, okay, this is a nice book, solid book. Um, I'm sure there's a market for it. I, I know that there's collector freaks with these bikes. And this looked like a collector's book to me. And it is. I bought that book for eight bucks. And I'm going to list it for $65. Okay, on to the next one. Here's a fraternal book. This is fresh in the box. Scottish Rite Freemasonry, 32nd degree. I tend to always buy fraternal material. And um, I paid $6 for this book. I listed it for 30 There you go, A.J. Holman Company. So hard to go wrong on that one. Here's a book that I wanted for myself, The, the Waldensians. Okay. And um, we'll take you inside. This is 1858. It is an ex-library book, but there isn't extensive marking. You see, it's a small plate, and um, here we go. Here's one of the pictures. The Waldensians were uh, per persecuted by the uh, Roman Catholic Church, as well as like groups like the Cathars. And I always wanted to read a little bit about these guys, and found that book and picked it up. It's loaded with uh, with illustrations, which is cool. And um, you know, for ten bucks, I thought it was hard to go wrong. This book I value at about forty dollars. All right, let's take you here. This is a two-volume set on Holland by De Amicis, okay? And I paid $25 for this set, um, and I opened up the jacket, and I said, what a beautiful presentation. Look at all the gold, the gold inlay here. It's gorgeous. It presents very well on a shelf. $25 buy. I'm going to sell this for um, $65. Very minor wear condition issues. This will probably take a little bit of time to sell, to be honest with you. But all you need is that one right buyer to come through. Where's the title page? It's hard doing this with one hand. That one that one buyer to come through, and it, it'll, it'll be gone. Cool windmill. Okay, moving to the next. Uh, representative Phi Beta Kappa Orations. Um, X Library again. Paid five bucks. Listed it for 30 Okay, show you the title page. Um, there we go. 1930. This book here is on the Oddfells. It was the only one that I kind of maybe messed up on. Six dollar book. It's only about eight dollars, but you know I can. I'll retain the money. I'll probably sell this in the shop, and um, that's okay. What by me? It happens uh, to, to 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 everyone. And then I got a John Ruskin set um, for like four bucks. I'm set, and I'll sell that for like fifteen twenty bucks. You know, kind of chump change, but. I shouldn't say chump change. It's sales like that that pay the bills, to be honest with you. So overall, what I spent was $130, all right? This was about three hours worth of work. When you uh, add everything up of, of what I plan on selling it for, um, I'm basically going to be netting up around $250. When the seller fees are taken out and I recoup, you know, the, one third, the 130 is taken out, you're going to be around 250 um, it could be, uh, it could be as low as, uh, as 200, but I, I think, you know, the smallest amount on that is about 200, 190, 200. So for three hours worth of work, that's a pretty good return. And, uh, again, I, I'll just say that, um, antique malls and shops, independent shops are a good place to, to source material. If you're selling books, you, you're generally going to find some antique books, I've always done fairly fairly well at it, and um, I think you will too. So if you're not doing anything this coming weekend, um, maybe check out some antiques, antique stores 
and pay pay them some a uh, uh, business. You you're probably going to find some books around and um for for an excellent price. And if you're a reseller, you know, again, there there can be some special unique uh titles in these malls and I've had good success. And as you see today, I'm going to do okay. With that being said, I hope everybody's doing well out there. I hope you found some value in this video. I'm tired of talking. I'm sorry if I talk too long. But um, until next time, guys, we'll see you later.